what are we saying about lactic acid and lactate and like what's like when you, the, the sensation the perceived sensation of soreness at a biomolecular level like the chemistry of that what's happening yeah so what you're almost always talking about is nose receptors it's pain receptors it is a signaling thing um lactate has no relationship whatsoever to muscle soreness it has no relationship to muscle fatigue either there's a relationship there but it's not causal in fact it is it is anti-fatiguing mm. so the production right. of lactic acid is not really a thing um yeah. lactate is is there pedantic so where why for why was that touted for so long as the standard yeah well okay two things and what's going to change next i'm so frustrated with science i'm so mad <laughs> well remember now <laughs> This is not your fault, um, but I will say it's a learning opportunity. Yeah. Science is not a noun, it's a verb. Yeah, of course. Right? Like, this is an action, it's not a thing. Unless you're Fauci. <laughs> Fucking Fauci. Uh, well. He owns it. I'll, I'll let, yeah. <laughs> Again, friends, it is, an, it is a verb. It's static and it's mine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll let you comment on that. So, the... Remember, science is limited by your current capabilities. And so the original research, 1808, I think was the first, no, 1790, 1780 was the first description of lactate. Uh, came from sour milk, is honest reality. Um, it was identified, 1808, I'm pretty sure, is when they found the first actual lactate in, in, in tissue. This was in hunted stags, so deer in Europe. And they, they realized, well, there's a ton more of this lactate in these stags who had been hunted and sprinting and saving for the life with um, a lot of, of course, stress and things like that. Handful of years later, it took for a while, um, really until the early 1920s to start identifying. Um, Meyerhoff, uh, Otto Meyerhoff won a Nobel Prize. 1907 was that paper, I believe. I bet you didn't know you're getting this kind of detail on lactate. Bro, I'm stoked. <laughs> um, his paper as well my as A.B. Hill. Are, my hands are in the Eiffel Tower pyramid pose. That's how you know. I'm like, I'm just taking it in. Yeah. You know? Uh, their work, they both won Nobel Prizes for basic understanding of metabolism. But one of the things at this point we realize is, all right, lactate is a byproduct of anaerobic metabolism. It is also generated in muscle with muscle contraction. No, none of those things were known before that. And there is an, a relationship there. There is an increase in lactate production with an increase in muscle contraction. That is a known phenomenon. What by, by product of that, the more you contract, the more lactate you create. The more you contract, the more fatigue you get. So that association is very strong. This is a classic example of misunderstanding causation and correlation mm -hmm. so they are highly correlated but one is not causing in fact one of the things that we know and, and in fact uh, there, there's a number of things that lactate has done but anyone who's ever had like an IV and you've had a ringer solution ringer solutions have been around since the early 1900s in 1930 they started putting lactate into ringer solutions mm. the reason they do that is because it is an insanely effective way to buffer metabolic acidosis point right there like why if i'm metabolically acidosis why am i getting an acid well you're not you're getting lactate that goes to the kidney you're able to then uh, generate bicarbonate and then you actually bring acidic levels down the brain um is one of the one of the most preferred fuel sources for the brain is lactate same with the heart the heart is the number one consumer of lactate in your entire body that 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 more lactate is consumed in the heart than anywhere else it loves it kidneys and um and liver are also huge fans of it. They're able to actually go through. So lactate is just half carbohydrate. That's all it is. You take glucose, split it in half, add some more chemistry to it. That's lactate. So if I take it back in the liver, put those two molecules back together, I just made glucose, which is an insanely effective fuel source. So they all love it. This is why the heart loves it. This is why the brain loves it. There's also actually a thing called an astrocyte. There's an astrocyte lactate shuttling theory or hypothesis rather, which is your astrocytes. And this is, Theory is a weak word for it because it's, it's very well established at this point, uh, or hypothesis rather. Your astrocytes, which are uh, most of the cells in your central nervous system, they absolutely love and will prefer lactate in many situations over anything else. Um, so powering your nervous system, this is one of the many, many reasons why um, lactate is highly associated with memory, with cognition, with learning, um, with sepsis, with insulin regulation, uh, with injury, with, with uh, muscle function, with muscle hypertrophy. Like you just go up and down the list and, and lactate is positively associated. It's also why they're running multiple trials right now where they're giving people lactate immediately after a traumatic brain injury mm. um, to see if there's a potentially any benefit there. Same thing with creatine. Creatine is true for all those things as well. Yeah. Um, so that's really what lactate, and, and to answer your actual question, why those things were associated that way they both went up, right? And it wasn't until we had way more advanced technology and chemistry to realize, oh, there's actually other issues that are happening there. 
and, and those just tend to be associated. So you're generating more lactate as a way to buffer the additional um, acid production, which is really one of the contributors to fatigue, of which there are many, many, but that's really what's happening with lactate. Mm -hmm.